Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at adding images and linked images in Adobe InDesign. So to start with, I've created a new document and to import an image, you can simply go up to File, down to Place, navigate to your image on your computer, select it, you can tick this box here, if you like, show import options and click open. Now, depending on the type of image you're importing, whether it's a TIFF, a JPEG, a PSD, etc., you may get some different options. When you're happy, just click OK. Now you'll see you get a guide here as to where the image is going to go. You can left click and drag to create a frame and place the image inside of that or let's just undo that. Or you can simply left click and it will place the image in at 100% in size. So let's do that for now. We can then adjust the size by clicking in this box at the top with a percentage and using the arrow keys or holding shift and using the arrow keys, just decrease that in size or increase it in size as we like. And it will keep everything proportional. Another way we can import images is we may have created a placeholder. So there's our placeholder. With that selected, we can go to File, down to Place, select our image, and make sure that we have Replace Selected Item selected. Click Open, and it will add our image inside this frame. Now we can select the Direct Selection tool and you'll see the hand appear here and you can move this around to adjust the crop. Now with the main selection tool, we can drag to crop into our image. We're adjusting the frame size here or we can adjust the image by modifying this percentage at the top. I'm just using the arrow keys there or you can select the drop down alongside and pick the size of your choosing and it will increase the size of the image or decrease the size of the image. However, if we use the direct selection tool and we do that again, it will only change the size of the image. The frame itself will stay the same. So you can see here that the frame is exactly the same size, but with the direct selection tool, I can adjust the image I can resize it easily and I can adjust the crop without actually editing the frame. So I could drag the frame to the top left corner and then drag it to the bottom right corner so it covers the entire page. Now you can see here that this image doesn't quite fill the entire page. So with the direct selection tool, we can select the image and drag, we'll drag it into the center and then just holding shift and alt will scale that up from the center. And you can see here we're scaling outside of the size of the document. However, because our frame itself is set exactly to that size of the document, it will be cropped and effectively masked off within that. So we've got a bit at the bottom here. Let's just Use those arrow keys to nudge that size up. And there you go. You can see that is how our image is going to look. Now, when importing high res imagery, typically if you go to view and down to display performance, it will have typical display selected. So this will display the image at yeah, medium kind of quality. It won't be rendering it at 100% quality because that will be quite taxing on your computer. And if you have, for example, a magazine that has hundreds of images in, it will take forever for pages to load. So this is a quite a quite good way of uh, having the, the visual fidelity of your images at a, an average level. So you can see the image, you can clearly see it, but it's not gonna slow down your computer too much. However, you can change that if you're running on a high-end computer, for example, to high-quality display, and it will render the image in much higher quality. 
Similarly, if you have a lot of images in a very large document, you can change the display performance to fast display, and it will simply show this gray boxes with crosses to indicate where images go. Personally though, for me, I use the typical display and the high quality display for most documents I work on. Now, when adding an image into InDesign, one thing that is worth noting is that it will link that image to where it is stored on your computer or on a hard drive that you have connected to your computer. So wherever the file is physically located, when you went up to file and down to place, that's where the image will be coming through. So if you move that file from its location or you rename it, or even if you edit the file, so if you edit it in Photoshop, for example, and then save over it, those changes will either be updated into InDesign or InDesign will tell you when you open the document that it cannot find the file, the link is broken. So with our image selected, we can go into the links palette on the right. You'll see our image is listed. We have the number here, which is one instance of that image within the document. And we've got a couple of options. We have the link icon here. So we can click that to relink this image to another image, or if we had an updated version of the same image, we could link to that. So when we click this, it will pop up a dialog box and we can then select another image. The one along from that with the arrow pointing to the document, if you click that, it will take you to where the image is located. So for example, if I was on, let's create another page. So I'm on page three at the moment and I click in the links palette, select the image and I click go to. It will take me straight to that image, that linked image right there. Along from that, we have the arrows going in a circle. Now, if you have changed this file outside of InDesign, for example, if this image were a PSD and I edited that PSD, added some more layers, did some more work on it and then saved it, it would then flag up with a yellow triangle here. And that indicates that the image has changed and it needs to be updated. So we can just click these arrows running in a circle, click on that icon, and it will update the latest version of your file into InDesign. If you do rename or move your file and it's listed as a missing link, you will see a red circle here with an exclamation mark in to indicate that it's missing. And lastly, on the right, we have Edit Original. So whichever application this image was created in, you can click that and it will automatically open the original file in that application. So if it was a PSD, you would click this and it would open this image straight back into Photoshop. You can edit it, save it, close it, and then when you jump back into InDesign, it will automatically update. So if we click that, so you can see here that it opens in preview because this image is a JPEG and preview is what I have set as my default program to view JPEGs. Now you can also select this image and you have this little drop down in the top right here, the little menu icon, and you do get a few extra options here. You can specify a specific program that you want to edit the image with if it doesn't open with the correct one, for example. You can reveal the image in Finder. You can reveal it in Adobe Bridge. Lots of other different options. Just one more thing that I wanted to mention is that embed link. You can select that. So if you want to embed the file into the Adobe InDesign file, you can do that. And it will display this symbol here. So you can now move the image, you can rename it, you can do what you like. This image is now embedded into the InDesign file and it's it kind of effectively breaks that link and just adds the image to the file. However, of course, this will increase the file size. So if you have lots and lots of high res imagery, just be careful before you add or embed all of it into a single file because it will make that file quite bloated. And there we go. That's a little bit about importing and linked images in Adobe InDesign. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.